Hey, muchachos and muchachas. It's good to be back with you. This is another in a series of videos about statics. And today I'd like to show you how to calculate the tension in a wire when you hang a weight from it. Now, the, the thing with this is that the wire is going to be largely horizontal. Now, you'll see this sometimes when you've got a wire hung between two posts and somebody's got a weight hung from the middle of it. You see this sometime at construction sites. You see sometimes people will rig this up trying to lift something. It doesn't tend to work very well and we're going to find out why. Now another example you may be familiar with is when somebody uh, slides down a zip line. Now a zip line is a wire or a rope hung between two posts and one end's a little lower than the other one. So you slide down it on a pulley. Now if you want to see what this looks like and you want to see why this is sometimes a bad idea, go check the internet. So let's start with our process for solving statics problems. And just to remind you, the process has four steps. Number one, we're going to draw a working diagram. Number two, we're going to draw a free body diagram. Number three, we're going to write equations of static equilibrium. Number four, we're going to solve for something. So let's do that right now. We're going to start with a working diagram. So this is easy. This wire sags a little bit, and it has to sag a little bit, or it isn't going to work. And there's a weight hung from it right there. Now I'm drawing these as just boundary conditions. Because the wire doesn't have any bending stiffness, it doesn't really matter whether that's pinned or clamped. There really is no difference for a wire. I guess if you really want to be specific, those would be pinned boundary conditions. So we could put those on there like that. And we've got an angle here. There's theta and there's theta. Okay, now it's symmetric side to side. The way I'm drawing this, the, these two uh, ends are at the same height. If they're not, it's not symmetric side to side, it means the sum of the forces isn't zero and this weight's going to be moving. Um, that makes it a dynamics problem. So this is the working diagram. This one's really pretty easy. Well, the next step is a free body diagram. Well, what do I draw a free body diagram of? Well, I could draw a free body diagram of the weight, but that's not going to include the wire. What I'm trying to find here is the tension in the wire. Find the tension in the wire is the problem statement. Well, I could draw just the wire. Well, that's not going to help much either. If I draw right there the connection between the wire and the weight, I'm going to get all the, all the parts I care about. I'm going to get the force down from the weight, and I'm going to get these two tensions coming up from uh, the wire. So let's do that. I'm going to draw the free body diagram of that point right there. And in practice, you know, physically, that could be a pulley. It could be a connector of some kind. It's going to be some mechanical device that brings all those together. But for the purposes of our free body diagram, it gets to be just a dot. That's the value of the free body diagram. So let's erase this and just draw a free body diagram just of that connector. Well, there's a weight right there. It doesn't really matter what this weight is, but let's say it's 10,000 newtons. For those of you who are used to English units and maybe don't know what that is, um, I'm about 215 pounds, and that makes me about 95 kilograms. So that makes me a little less than 1,000 newtons. So one middle-aged professor is a little less than 1,000 newtons. Think of this as maybe 10 middle-aged professors. So there's tension there and tension there. Right? And remember, these angles are the same on both sides, so it's symmetric. That, that matters a lot. The other thing we're assuming is the tension on both sides is the same, because if this is a pulley in there, it's just one rope and there's a cable, and the tension in the cable is the same everywhere. So there's my free body diagram. And again, I'm going to need a coordinate system, so we'll use this one. This isn't the only one that'll work, but it's it, it, if you don't want us to do, do that. It works most of the time. Um, so we'll do that. So let's do this. Let's see. The, the, the problem right now is that these two tensions are not lined up with my coordinate system. They're at some angle. So let's break these down into components so they are lined up with my coordinate system. So there's tension in the x direction. There's tension in the y direction. There's another one from the other wire. 
there's tension in the x direction, and there's weight. Okay, now everything's lined up with my coordinate system. Now I can start writing equations. Well, because tension is the same on both, I know that Tx in that direction and Tx in that direction are the same. So it really cancels out. So all I need to do, really, is I know that 2Ty, both of those, has to equal the weight. All right? That's about as simple as free body diagrams get. So we've gone from here to here to here. I'm going to leave all this up here for right now because I don't know what Ty is. Well, let's draw a force triangle. There's T, there's Ty, and there's Tx. And I can draw little arrows there if you want. Well, if that's theta, it sure looks like Ty over T must be sine theta. So Ty equals t sine theta, right? So that's 2t sine theta when we get that far. So if this is OK, I'm going to erase this stuff, and we're going to, we're going to finish up here. So I've got my, my working diagram. I've got my really simplified free body diagram. The next step is to write an equation of static equilibrium. Well, we already know the horizontal forces cancel out. They have to because the problem is symmetric. So that all i got to do now is sum the forces in the y direction, set them equal to 0. Given this coordinate system, I shouldn't have erased my coordinate system. All right, so looks looks to me like 2ty minus w equals 0. It doesn't get much simpler than that. And that means 2t sine theta equals w. And if I'm trying to find t, that means t equals w over 2 sine theta. Look at that. That's easy. So let's start plugging some numbers in. Well, what is theta? I didn't tell you. Let's do this. Let's figure out what happens if for, we have a couple different values of theta. Let's say you want theta to be small, 10 degrees. Okay, that's a, that's a pretty small angle. That means that the, the wire doesn't sag very much in the middle. Well, if you don't want the wire to sag, intuition says that the tension would have to be pretty high, right? Well, let's, let's, let's find out. Well, it turns out the sine of 10 degrees is, uh, got it written down over here, 0 0.1736, pretty much. Well, that's a pretty low number. So that means T is 10,000 newtons over 2 times 0 0.1736. That's about uh, 0 0.3435, pretty much. So I'm going to get 28794 newtons. Wow. That means at 10 degrees, the tension in the wire has to be about 10 times the weight I'm lifting. Whoa. OK. Well, how am I going to? That, that seems like a lot of tension. How do I reduce the tension? Well, what if I make the angle larger? What if theta equals 45 degrees? Then T is 10,000 newtons over 2 times 0 0.7071, right? and that's going to give me, may imagine this, 7071 newtons. So at 45 degrees, the tension in the wire can actually be a little less than the weight of the, uh, uh, the, the weight we're, we're trying to lift. One last thing here before we stop. What if I wanted that wire to be horizontal, perfectly horizontal? Is that possible? Well, if the wire is perfectly horizontal, there's no vertical component, right? What happens to sine as theta gets small? As theta gets small, sine goes to zero. So if you want a really low angle in there, you're going to need an enormous tension in that wire. If you wanted to hold a 10,000 pound weight at some small angle, like a degree or two, don't be surprised if the tension in the wire is two, five, ten times the weight you're trying to lift. So horizontal wires are not a very good way to try to lift weights. So there you have it. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.